one. Now there are some news that none of us are prepared to hear. I certainly wasn't when I heard one such news a couple of years ago. My name is Sujit Koshi Vargas. I'm born and raised in the UAE. I did most of my schooling here. I was li I'm living with my parents. Dubai life is something I could uh, describe as a very routine life. A couple of years later, I moved to Bangalore to pursue my university. I was 20 at that time. Friends, bikes, parties, you name it, I had it. It was all there. Life was nothing short than a constant vacation. And ever since school, I was always active in the field of sports. I started off playing in the basketball team for my, in my high school years. And uh, during my college years, I got introduced to the world of boxing, in which I took an immediate liking towards. It gave me a sense of focus and discipline I needed. So basically, at that age, 20, I felt like I had it all and I was living a life that every guy wanted. You know, I had all the freedom in the world. I was, uh, I was a boxer, so I felt like I was on top of the world, untouchable. Uh, I was living life to max. I was basically the it guy wherever I went. You know, I felt I was at my peak. Nothing could touch me. And I would, this is how it was going to be throughout. Now, like I said in the beginning of this speech, there is some news that some of us aren't or don't prepared. They're not, we're not prepared to hear or accept it. And mine came to me in March 31st, 2013. The news came to me like a speck of dust that wouldn't leave my eye or like a bad song that was playing on my head on repeat. Me and a couple of my friends were at a, at a friend's house, just another casual night. As the night progressed, we decided to take our bikes out for a ride, something we would do very often. I remember getting on my bike and riding off. And at pace, I remember entering this tunnel and while coming out of it, this is one of my very last memory I have till date. While getting out of it, my bike hit a truck, a stationary truck. I lost control of my bike and my bike crashed into a concrete pillar of a shop. My friends heard the sound and they came back just to find my body lying dead over there with this broken concrete wall on top of me. I was rushed to the hospital. The first hospital left me unattended in their lobby for four hours, untreated. And upon checking, checking my vitals, I had a count of three out of 15. That's called a GSE count. Now what this means is, I had a three out of 15. I, was, I barely had a pulse. I barely had a heartbeat. I was barely alive. I was in coma for a week on the support of a ventilator. And, upon, and uh, I was in the ICU for about two weeks. Upon waking up, I was told I had two major surgeries done on my body already. The doctors explained. I suffered 18 fractures on my skull. Three of my ribs were broken, one piercing my lung and made a hole. I had multiple fractures all over my body, my face. But the injury that changed my life was a spinal cord injury. My spinal cord at my T5, T6 level was crushed. I was basically paralyzed below my waist. Now it took me a couple of months, or years rather, to accept the fact that something like this could happen to me. And uh, I was just hoping every day I was just waking up and it was a bad dream. The next couple of months was spent in the rehabilitation, teaching me how to move from a wheelchair to a car, how to move from a wheelchair to a bed, how to take a shower, how to pick things from the ground. Literally, I was taught all over again. But you know what hurt me really most was that the people's attitudes and, persp and perspective about me changed. My friends left, almost every one of them. People started looking at me with sympathy and they thought I was done and that I'm never going to recover from this. They thought I was done, my chapter is done and that's his life story. They, they didn't expect anything of me anymore. And I was at home 24 hours a day. But you know what? Being at home 24 hours a day, I had something with me at that time, which I never had before. I had time, time to think, time to analyze, time to think about my actions that I've done till date, the consequences, the people I've hurt, the people I've loved, the things I did for people that didn't matter to impress people that didn't care. My entire life stopped and flashed back in front of me. It was like a repeat, questioning everything I've done till date. Was it worth it or wasn't? Friends used to call. This was the single most biggest realization of my life, by the way. Friends used to call. It was more of a one-sided conversation asking about my health and that was it. 
you know, every, my entire life was questioned of, uh, will I ever have a normal job again? Will I ever be a normal guy again? Will I uh, have a normal social circle again? I was lost, I was confused, and I was unaware what to do next. And you know, at that time, though in life, everything stood against me, something in me remained unchanged. And that was the spark in me, the fire, the fire that had pushed me all these years to be who I was. Though everybody was coming against me, all the negativity was coming towards me, my only goal, my only vision, my only focus, my only determination was to prove these people wrong and that I am not limited by their thoughts of what's possible for me and what's not. I was determined to make it bigger and higher than most of, most of the people I knew. Their limitations on me pushed me to think beyond my imagination just and just to prove to them one thing only that I, Sujit, was still capable. You know, there's a saying, in life everything happens for a reason. A lie I have loved and what I have made of and I still make of today is the truth that all of you see here today. My first step of picking myself up came when I was denied one very simple thing and that is sleeping in my own very room in my house in Kerala. Thing is, my room is on the first floor and I, I'm on the ground floor and nobody could find a way to get this boy all the way upstairs. I asked, I asked, I insisted, I was denied over and over again until finally I had to rewire my mind to think of a way how to get upstairs without anybody's help. And I thought, I was so persistent that I wheeled myself to the end of the stair, I placed myself from the wheelchair to the stair and I physically lifted up my entire body with my hands 18 steps up and I reached the top floor. And you know, when I reached on top, I was exhausted, I was tired, I was sweaty, I was panting, I was, I was dead. But it was worth it. You know why? Because I suddenly did something what almost everybody considered impossible. And I did it by myself. From then on, uh, whatever I've done, whatever I've accomplished, so I started picking myself up. This was the very first boost that I got within myself, the fire lit back up again, saying that I could do something what people thought was impossible. And over the years, no matter whatever I've done, whatever I've accomplished, people always found a shortcoming in me because I was on a wheelchair. They always said he could do this, this, but he wouldn't be able to do that because that's way harder to him or for him. They said, no matter what he does, he always needs somebody with him because he's on a wheelchair. In 2017, I took a flight solo from, Bang from Charger all the way to Bangalore I stayed in Bangalore for a week, had the best time with my friends, and I came back to base. The same people who told Sujit, that's never going to happen, that is not possible, suddenly came and asked me, how did you do it? From then on, it was just changing people's perspectives of what they thought about a person on a wheelchair. They told me I'll never have a decent job, I probably wouldn't get a job. Today I work for Emirates NBD in the Treasury Department. They said my confidence and my spirit would be broken and that my voice is going to be shunned. Today, I'm a motivational speaker in the UAE. And just when they thought that I wouldn't get my body back, that I wouldn't get to be fit again, today, I'm a fitness influencer in the UAE and an official fitness influencer for the Dubai Fitness Challenge. <laughs> this drive in me was just to prove people one thing and to show people one thing, that if you put your heart and your mind into the things that you want, anything is possible. And that very drive drove me last year to do something exceptional. And it had to be physical for people to see that it's done by a guy in a wheelchair. That's when I collaborated with Virgin Radio, Chris Fade Show. I collaborated with Chris. I, I ended up pulling a car that was tied to my body, a car that weighed 1,200 kilos for about 10 meters physically sitting on my wheelchair. Now, let me tell you, for a normal person to pull a car is hard, I agree. But if I asked you before you saw me, do you think a person in a wheelchair would do that much weight? Most of you would have said, that's not possible. And I did that only not because of my physical strength, but because I was determined to do so. And that very determination pushed, that very determination got me winning the Masala Award 2017 for the most inspirational personality. Guys, I wouldn't let my story be used as a cautionary tale, but that of a learning for oneself to find their fire within that will help them 
to do things beyond their imagination and let me tell you look for it nowhere not outside not on him not on me not on anybody but within within you within yourself all you got to do is make the first move take the first step i found my fire now it's time to find yours i'm just going to show you a small slides of my journey that i've been through all this while Like I say guys the fall may not be yours to blame but the rise definitely is thank you next up